and we're back. That took just a couple of minutes. Now we're at something that looks pretty interesting. This is the partitioner, uh, and it looks pretty scary here because it's highlighted on Array's entire disk. Um, but keep in mind that this is in Virtual PC, so what Virtual PC does is it makes a file on your computer and it calls that a hard disk. So as long as you're in Virtual PC uh, and um, you're seeing this screen, uh, you really don't have anything to worry about. Um, you want to go ahead and, and erase the entire disk. Keep in mind that we are in the Virtual PC window. If you're installing this on your computer though and not in Virtual PC, it'll do just that. So uh, think twice if you're doing an install on your, on your main system here. But if you're in Virtual PC, go ahead and select Erase Entire Disk, and what it's going to do is it's going to go out and, and um, uh, set up that um, um, virtual hard drive that Virtual PC sets up. It takes a couple of minutes for it to think about what it wants to do, uh, and then it's going to make some suggestions about um, the automatic uh, partitioning. Uh, I would recommend you, you just accept these changes. Um, there, there isn't any reason in a virtual PC to, to fool around with changing the swap files or, or anything else as you might on an actual production Linux machine. So arrow back over to yes um, to accept those defaults and proceed. Uh, I'm going to press enter and away it goes. Uh, it'll uh, go ahead and take care of those partitions, uh, start doing some additional work, and I'll come back when the next interesting screen comes up. And we're back. Next interesting thing that comes up is you just need to set your time zone. Uh, I happen to be in Arizona. I'll select that. And it's going to ask a kind of a curious question about your clock, uh, about um, universal coordinated time. And um, I, I always just accept the default here. Never had a problem with it. So go ahead and do that. And now a full name for the new user. This would normally be your name. I'll put in... Um, test user just for just for illustrative purposes here and press continue. Um, the actual username for the account, it defaults to the first name uh, of the uh, full name, but you can of course type in a different username. Uh, and this is the, the user ID that you'll be logging into the system with. So I'll leave that at test for now. Uh, it's going to want a password. It wants you to confirm the password. And now it's off and running again. And uh, this will take several minutes at this point, uh, so I will pause the recording and come back shortly. And we're back. Uh, that process took several minutes while it loaded most of the system. Uh, the next interesting screen you come to is this one, configuring uh, xserver-xorg, uh, where you can select video modes. Uh, the default modes that are, are selected are 1024 by 768, 800 by 600, 640 by 480. Uh, there really isn't any reason to select any other of those for virtual PC. Um, you can always come back later um, in, um, uh, in, in Ubuntu through the configuration utilities and change that. So uh, my recommendation here is just to press enter and take the default at the screen. Uh, it's now going to um, uh, configure that and do a few other things. So I'll pause and come back in a few minutes. And I'm back for a couple of minutes. Um, it's still got quite a ways to go, but I do want to point something out here. There are times during this process when the uh, whole thing may appear to be just stuck um, or locked up. Uh, and that's usually not the case. It may stick on a percentage for what seems to you like a very long time. Uh, but if you'll take a look down here, uh, you can see these um, little status lights down here. If they're blinking on and off, even occasionally, this one over here is your hard drive light down on the bottom left. Uh, this is the CD. Of course, you don't have a CD installed, but it's reading that ISO image. So uh, my advice to you, if you think it's locked up, is to uh, be patient and allow it a good several minutes. Um, take a look and see if there's any activity going on here at all uh, before you give up. Uh, because most of the time um, uh, it goes through. I've, I've done this very few times when I actually did have a genuine lockup for some reason. So uh, I'll let it continue installing, and we'll be back soon. And we're back. It's been, oh, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes. It um, uh, is much slower in uh, virtual PC than if you were doing this on a, uh, on a full computer system. Um, but it's done, and I'm going to reboot. I want to tell you what's just ahead, though. Uh, as soon as I reboot, um, it's going to uh, uh, start to come up, and you have about three seconds to hit the escape key. Uh, and the reason we're going to do that is if you hit the escape key within that first three seconds, uh, you'll actually bring up a boot menu. 
there's a, a configuration change we need to make to that. And what that's going to allow us to do is after the system then finishes booting, uh, we'll be able to get in and uh, adjust um, uh, and fix that incompatibility I mentioned earlier uh, between virtual PC and Linux installations. Uh, and so, uh, again, I'm going to hit uh, enter now to reboot and then watch when I um, uh, press the escape key uh, when that um, uh, boot menu first starts to come up. So here we go. Finishing up, um, going to do a system reboot here. Uh, you see the RAM check, and then right here, I don't know if you caught that, but it started counting down 3, 2, 1 after that RAM check, and that's where you need to hit the escape key now. Uh, if you miss it, if it goes ahead and starts to boot, that's okay. Uh, if you'll take a look at the action key here, you'll see that you can hit reset. Um, that works just like a reboot. So uh, you go ahead and keep um, uh, rebooting there until you're able to bring up this boot screen. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrow down to the second line. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to stay right here on the first line. Uh, and I'm going to press E to edit this thing, this first line here. Now I'm going to arrow down to the second line. Uh, and that's the kernel boot line. And I'm going to hit E again to edit. Uh, it takes me to the end of the line. I'm going to press the space bar and type in VGA equals 0x314. Uh, there's a few different numbers you could punch in here. You may have seen some other numbers. Um, this one puts it into 800 by 600 by 16 mode uh, when it boots. Uh, and that's all I need to do. I just type in that little, little phrase there uh, and press enter. And now I'm going to hit B for boot. Uh, and it will then take a while to boot. Um, it'll start to come up. It'll look okay. Give it a few minutes here so you can see what I'm talking about. And it looks like things are going fairly well. Uh, and it'll look okay for a while. Let me pause this so we don't take up too much screen time. We're back, and this is, uh, this is what you're seeing. It was looking pretty good there for a while, but then this um, distorted screen display comes up. And at this point, there's not um, too much you can do with the, um, uh, with, with the video that's here. But by making that change that we made earlier, that VGA equals 0x314, it allows us to get into a terminal mode so we can fix some stuff. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Control and the Alt key and then press F1. So Control, Alt, F1. And that brings us to a, a text-based login. Now, if we hadn't done the VGA equals 0x314 in that first uh, step on rebooting, uh, this screen would be distorted too. So that's why you need to make this change. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in using the username and password that I set. Uh, and it'll log in. And now let me tell you how to fix this. I um, uh, don't know if you're going to be able to see this on the screen. So I'm going to type in a command and then uh, I'll tell you what it is. Okay, that's S-U-D-O space N-A-N-O space slash E-T-C slash capital X-11 slash X-O-R-G dot C-O-N-F. What this is going to do is it's going to bring up the uh, nano text editor, uh, and I'm going to look for uh, the color depth, which is what's causing our problem. So let me go ahead and press enter again, S-U-D-O space N-A-N-O space slash E-T-C slash capital X-11 slash X-O-R-G dot C-O-N-F. Uh, and that capital X is important case counts in Linux and Unix systems, so you need to be sure that um, uh, you have your capitalization correct when you do commands. And that's going to ask for the password. 